How long, O Lord? How long will the wicked prosper? How long will our suffering last? How long before you make everything right? We pray to you, then sit in silence, waiting for a response. Minutes pass into days, months turn into years. How long, O oh Lord? It said that you're not slow to act, but patient, waiting for our hearts to turn back to you. In the meantime, we are here, watching, waiting for you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Gord Ponak. I'm the lead pastor at Richfield Christian Fellowship, and I'm so glad that you have chosen to join us online today. I know that God wants to speak to you. He wants to pour into your life, especially during this season, this pandemic, when we're isolated, we're quarantined, and uh, we need God's peace and presence in our lives. If you open your ears, he's going to speak to you today. I know it. So uh, stay tuned. I've got a message for you that's going to encourage you, challenge you, and uh, give you some keys to uh, have God's presence comfort you in this season. But why don't you join me now as we welcome my good friend Terrell Edwards from Sherwood Park to lead us into some worship.
is here. enter in. He came to save us and he did exactly what he said he'd do. He's coming on the cloud. King and kingdoms will bow down. And every chain Broken hearts declare His praise For who can stop the Lord Almighty Our God is the Lion The Lion of Judah He's roaring with power And fighting our battles And every knee will bow before Him Our God is the Lamb The Lamb that was slain 
the sins of the world His blood breaks the chains And every knee will bow before the light and the Lamb Every knee will bow before Him Whoa. So open up the gates Make way before the King of Kings Our God who comes to say Is here to set the captives free and Who can stop the Lord Almighty Our God is the Lion The Lion of Judah He's roaring with power And fighting our battle and every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains. And every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. This is just a matter of fact we're going to proclaim here today. Just We just simply say, who will stop the Lord Almighty? We as believers, we know that the answer is no one. So when times, you can sing after me. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Stop the Lord. Whoa, 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 who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah He's roaring with power and fighting our battles And every knee will bow before Him Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain For the sins of the world His blood breaks the chain and every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. Whoa. Join us. God bless you. I want to talk to you today about the promise that leads to God's peace that gives us patience. And it's a time we need patience. We're waiting for things to get back to uh, normal, whatever normal is, whatever your normal is, you want it back, right? Well, we all do, and it's a time when we have to hang on, hold on to God's promises. So let's start there. I want to read to you out of the book of Romans. It's a book in the New Testament that the Apostle Paul wrote. And in chapter 8, verses 38 to 39, uh, he says this, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
You know, we've been memorizing this scripture as a family at home during our, our supper times. And uh, I wanted our, my family to, to lock into this promise because no matter what else happens, this is a promise we can hold on to. It's so important. It's so pivotal. What is your breaking point? I know maybe you feel like you're almost there with all that's going on around us. You've had just about enough. But when it comes to relationships, what is that point where you say, I will go this far and then that's it? What is the straw that will break the camel's back for you? When is it you will say, I've had enough, I quit? What would it take for you to, to split with your spouse, to break up with your girlfriend or your boyfriend, or, or to call quits on that lifelong relationship, that lifelong friend that you've had since you were little? What would it take? What would it take? Would it be physical violence if they hit you, if they punched you, if they hurt you physically in some way? What about emotional pain? What if they cheated on you? Would that be the, the final straw? What if they lied to you? What if they hurt you repeatedly, again and again? What would it take to say, I've had enough? Verbal abuse? Physical abuse? We all have our limits. And sometimes uh, we break a relationship off too soon, and other times not soon enough. I once had a girlfriend dump me. And you want to know why? So do I. She never gave me a reason. She just decided she was going to break up with me. I had invested myself into this relationship. And three days after it began, she dumped me. Man, grade seven was hard. You know, it doesn't matter that COVID-19 is the big challenge right now. We always need God's presence in our lives. And we always need his promise, the promise that he gave us. He said, I will never leave you or forsake you. That's God's promise to those who are his children. Some people don't acknowledge the presence of God in this world. They acknowledge the presence of sin in this world, and they blame God for it. But sin has been in the world ever since Adam and Eve ate from the tree they were not supposed to eat in the garden at the beginning of mankind. They rebelled. The paradise that God had intended for us to enjoy was hijacked by rebellion. And to this day, we reap the consequences of that decision so long ago. But the presence of God in this world is what is right with this world. It's the goodness of God that shines through. The good news you hear that is happening in the midst of this pandemic, that's God. That's God's heart. That's God, God's idea. When you see uh, healthcare workers being applauded by the cities uh, that they work in, that demonstrates God's heart for people. When you see as I've seen on, on social media, you see an old man who can't go in to be with his wife, and so he serenades her from outside her window. That demonstrates God's commitment to, to his people. When you see people singing from their balconies to one another across the streets, across the alleyways, it demonstrates God's desire for relationship with people. It's all reflective. All the good that we see is reflective of God's heart for us. When you see Jesus dying on a cross for us, that demonstrates God's love for us. Jesus is and always will be the promise of, I will never leave you or forsake you. If anyone thought that God's love was fickle or restrained, or incomplete, or hidden, the cross shouts a rebuttal. I love you this much, and I will never leave you. That's what the cross is all about. And that is the promise of God given to us through Jesus Christ. And the promise can only be received through Jesus Christ. And when we accept that promise, when we lay hold of it and own it, then we can experience the peace that God gives us. Paul, the apostle again, in a different book, the book of Philippians, he writes this about peace. 
The peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. There's a peace that you and I can have that simply just doesn't make any sense. I mean, everything else can be falling apart in total chaos and panic around us, and yet in our hearts we can have a peace that says everything will be okay because God's got this. I've encountered this peace on multiple occasions, and I love it, and I'm so thankful for it. I mean, I didn't know what to do in the situation. I was overwhelmed, I was stressed, I was concerned, I had no solution, I had no answer. Uh, all my own solutions had come to an end and nothing was working. And I took the time to, to lay them on God's shoulders. I gave them to God and I said, God, these are yours. I can't handle them, I, I can't do anything about them. And I give them to you. And when I did that, the peace that passes understanding. I mean, nothing shifted in my situation that I was aware of. I didn't get the check in the mail that paid off my debts. I didn't have the solution that I was looking for come knocking on my door. But yet I felt a peace because God spoke in my heart, in my spirit. He said, it's okay. I've got a plan and I won't leave you high and dry. I will never leave you or forsake you. The key to this piece is found in the preceding verse to, to the one I just read. In Philippians 4, 6, Paul writes, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. This peace doesn't just fall out of heaven. It doesn't just come walking up onto your doorstep. It doesn't fall like rain from the clouds. You have to be proactive. You have to get it. You have to reach out for it. You have to ask it. You, you have to seek it. You have to do something to get it. You have to pray. Paul says, pray. Pray about it. Prayer and petition. Come to God. And prayer, prayer is that, that element, that um, connector between us and God. When we pray, we come into God's presence. And that's a powerful thing. Many people don't understand that about prayer, but that is an incredibly powerful aspect of prayer, that we come into God's presence. And when we are in God's presence and we encounter his presence, it's powerful. And all these challenges become peripheral because we're in the presence of God Almighty who has all the strength we need, who has all the solutions we need, who has all the love we need. He has all the solutions and we don't have to panic. We can come to him, be in his presence and just know that he's going to take care of it. That is a God who loves us so much. There's no fear in the presence of the Prince of Peace. There's no worry in the presence of Almighty God. When you're there with Him, you realize how much He loves you. When you're there, you realize how He wants to protect you. And He's for you and not against you. And He wants to keep you mentally and emotionally strong and well and healthy. And the verse says we should come with thanksgiving. Because when we come with thanksgiving, we're being thankful for all that God has already done. Looking back in the past and seeing how he spared us, how he's taken care of us, how he's provided in the past. And we can be thankful for everything we have, the, the clothes we wear, the food we eat, the cars we drive, the homes we live in, the friends we have. We can thank God for his generous hand of provision. So we come into his presence with thanksgiving because it, there's a, a, a humility about it. We humble ourselves because we acknowledge that God has done great things in the past, and so we recognize in faith that he's going to continue doing what he's always done and watching over us, taking care of us, and providing. He won't let you down. Well, I just finished a 12K run here in my new neighborhood in my half marathon training. And uh, learning a little bit about the area and very disappointed to find out that 
there are uphills here. I was hoping my running route would just be all downhills, but it doesn't seem to work that way. As a matter of fact, I found out why this place is called Walker Summit. I mean, look at these hills. Okay, well, it feels like that when you've run 10 kilometers and you see one of these hills before you. And I re realized that I have to persevere. I have a choice. I can either quit, stop running, which is not very effective training for accomplishing my goal, or I can be patient. I can persevere. I can endure. And so I have to choose that if I want to successfully reach the finish line. Patience is not just a virtue, it's something that God gives us as a fruit of the Spirit. And so I choose patience. <sighs> Do you feel like your patience is wearing a little thin? It's a rhetorical question. I'm sure that some of you are just at wit's end. Let's talk about patience, how we can have true patience. In the New Testament, there's another book called the Book of James, and James was the brother of Jesus. And he, in verse 11 of chapter 5, he writes about the patience of Job. And when someone seems to have it all together in the middle of a challenging situation, and they seem to be calm, cool, and collected, uh, we say about them, they have the patience of Job. But uh, maybe it's not as we understand patience to be. I like to think that Job was more proactive than he was patient, really. Uh, upon hearing of all the tragedies that were coming at him, I mean, he lost uh, his livestock, uh, he lost his servants who worked for him, uh, and when I say lost, stolen, killed, and then uh, the final blow was his children were all gathered together in one place, and, um, and the place crashed down, burned down, and they all died. This all happened in a matter of minutes, and Job fell on his knees. And this is how Job was not patient, but he was proactive. He fell on his knees, and what did he say? Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In another sense, he was saying, God gives, God takes away. I'm still going to worship God. I choose, I choose to worship God. And therein lies the proactivity of Job. Better translations of the word patient in James 5.11 are endurance or per perseverance. Job didn't really exhibit patience when he cursed the day that he was born, uh, or when he said, sighing has become my daily food, my groans pour out like water, not, not words that a patient man utters. In the face of his accusers, Job endured. He had his supposed friends gathered around him, and they're giving him all sorts of bad advice. He endured he endured in, in his convictions, in his belief. He wasn't going to be swayed any different way. Uh, they continually shot bad advice, advice at him, but he wouldn't cave in to any of their bad advice. The kind of patience that Job shows is intentional. He was proactive. When we exhibit true patience, we prevent panic. True patience prevents panic. Patience is like a white blood cell that fights off infection. And white blood cells, they're, they're capable of motility, meaning they, they can operate independently. And when they detect uh, a virus, an infection coming at the body, they can move towards it and fight it off. Uh, if it weren't for white blood cells, we would be susceptible to all kinds of serious infections, constantly sick. Your patience has motility. It can operate independently. It can function by your will and your determination, by you being proactive. And when something comes, when something comes at you like the impurity of stress, worry, anxiety, 
you can exhibit intentionally, you can exhibit patience. You can choose to be patient. The fact that you may not be a patient person doesn't mean that you can't still be patient. You, you can still choose it. Listen to what Paul writes in the book of Galatians. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying uh, each other. Paul wrote, since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. When we are impatient, we are out of step with the Spirit of God. Some people say they don't have the gift of patience, but patience isn't a gift, like a musical talent or uh, uh, an intellectual ability. Patience isn't a gift. It's a result of walking with God. See, the fruit of the Spirit is available to each one of us. And all these nine aspects come by walking in the Spirit, being with the Spirit of God, having the Spirit of God in you. And that comes through a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. I want to ask you today, are you keeping in step with God's Spirit? Do you have the Spirit of God within you? Have you ever accepted God's free gift of peace and hope and love? It all comes through his free gift of salvation. And if that's you today, if you're feeling emotionally drained, if you're feeling impatient, if you're lacking peace in your life, if you're worried and concerned I want to invite you to know this God of peace through Jesus Christ. And it comes through confessing Jesus as your Lord and Savior. It comes through uh, asking him to be the Lord of your life. It comes through turning away from your own ways and choosing to turn towards God's ways. It comes from asking forgiveness for your sins and saying, Lord, I'm sorry and I invite you to be the Lord of my life. I would love to pray that prayer with you right now. And so if you'd bow your heads with me, you can say this prayer in your heart along with me. And God knows your heart. God, I thank you that you have afforded peace for me and hope for me and joy for me. Lord, I thank you that I can walk in step with you by your Holy Spirit. And God, today, I want to surrender my life to you completely. I haven't walked with you. Lord, I've, I've been like Adam and Eve, and I've made rebellious choices. I haven't followed your ways for me. So God, instead, I give my heart to you, and I ask you to forgive me from all my sins. And I trust that you took them to the cross, and you died for me. And so now I ask you to cleanse me, and to come and be my Lord and Savior, to be my best friend, to walk with me forever. Jesus, thank you that you've come into my life today. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, you've become a follower of Christ, and I know that God has given you new life right now. He's given you new life. You are what the Bible calls a new creation. You're a new man. You're a new woman. And I would love to hear from you. Please email me uh, at this website right here in front of me, at this email, I should say. Connect with me. Let me know. I want to reach out to you and give you next steps in your journey. Uh, for everyone who's watching online, let me say one final prayer for all of us before I let you go. Lord, today I pray for your presence on everybody who's watching this online. May you comfort them and give them hope and peace right where they're at. May they know the God who is mighty. May they know you to be a God who is powerful, but also personal. I pray that each one would encounter your love today in a very tangible way. 
Lord, protect our, protect our homes and our loved ones from this virus. I ask for a divine protection on everybody. Lord, by your blood, may they be protected in Jesus' name. And Lord, we thank you that better days are ahead. And Father, that is certainly true when we choose to walk with you and keep in step with your spirit. We know that we have nothing to fear when we walk with you. So thank you, Lord, for every promise that you've given us into your, your word, uh, through your word, is yes and amen in Jesus. We love you today, we bless you, and we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, everyone. I pray that you would go and be blessed and that you join us again online here at Richfield, 10.30 a.m. next Sunday. Goodness of God.